Oh, all right. I was super excited to make this video. And then a couple reviews came out and then I wasn't. But here I am. So let's talk about the EOS R5 and R6. I'm gonna kind of clump them together, but mainly I'm gonna be talking about the R5. I think I would get the R5 if I was to get one of these two cameras. So that's kind of my thought process with that. So Canon released the EOS R5 and the R6. They look like beasts on paper, everything that you need and more. Canon really decided to give everyone all the specs that they've been asking for and just really shut up the haters as far as it came to specs. So 8K raw, boom. What? 8K regular, I don't know, what do you call that? 10 bit 422 <laughs> regular, boom. 8K again, just a slightly more compressed version. 4K 120, 4K 60. 1080p 120, hopefully with the firmware update. <clears throat> really everything most shooters will need. If you need more than that, you've got a problem. Just kidding. All right, so to have pretty much DCI 8K, you're gonna need about at least 38 megapixels. This camera has 45 with, I'm assuming that's the five by three or five by four ratio of the sensor uh, but when it comes to 16 by 9 video that's about 38 megapixels that's a lot so photo side is going to be great you know you're going to get really sharp photos that you can crop into and still have a high level of sharpness and detail and clarity i think if you're a photo shooter and you just kind of take some videos on the side and don't really use a lot of video features or want to have the ability to shoot a little burst of high res video, R5 is going to be great. Now if you're primarily a video shooter and you're using the R5 as your main camera, its issues are going to come up and it's in my opinion from what I've seen, obviously I don't have the camera, but I just don't see it being usable. So the R6 I thought at 20 megapixels only down something from 5K in the HQ mode, wouldn't have these problems. But apparently people are still having these problems with the device. So the main three problems I see are gonna be the overheating, the codex, and then the uh, record limit, I guess is a semi problem to some people. The record limit was a tax that was enforced on camera companies long time ago that said, you know, they had to pay this tax if they wanted to record it and be a video camera. And so companies to get around that would just stop the recording at 29 minutes and 59 seconds. That tax was dissolved in 2018. So theoretically it shouldn't exist on any camera, but it does here, don't know why. So for me personally, I mainly do music videos. So I'm taking three, five minute burst of video. Perfectly fine for me. I don't need a record limit. YouTube stuff like this, sometimes I've gone over 30 minutes in A roll and I've had to restart, but that's been far and fair in between. I don't know that phase. Phrase, wow. Now, if I was mainly a wedding photographer, uh, an interviewer, that kind of stuff does come into play and that record limit sucks. For my EOS R, I do have the Ninja 5. So if I do need to have unlimited recording, I can hook that up and set it up and that's what I've need done. So that's what I've done when I need to record longer than 30 minutes. That being said, it's a workaround that should be included in a camera. So the second problem is gonna be the codex and this I think is actually what bothers me more than the overheating. So Canon gives you these huge bit rates, which means they're recording a lot of data and that's awesome for color grading and really seeing the depth and detail of an image. That's awesome, but two things come up. One, they're gonna be really huge file sizes, and two, it's wrapped in um, HEVC encoding, which essentially is H.265. That's not really easy on computers. Now at first, I thought that it could just be the bit rate that is making this difficult, but it seems that the HEVC 10-bit 422 
It's just not supported by current graphics cards. Actually, for some reason, 444 or 420 are easier to decode in the H.265 format on computers. So then how have people been putting out archive videos? Well, probably transcoding or just dealing with slow playback. The first option is kind of what everyone's been saying to do, transcode your footage. Well, what does that mean? That means taking the footage that you got off your camera and then rewrapping it again and changing it into a different file format. So essentially you export it into another um, less compressed but high quality format. Cool, now you've just added on to my workflow. I'm not okay with it. I'm sure in a lot of professional situations, people are okay with this. Me, I'm not. I don't wanna have to decode, re-encode my footage and then start editing. And if you wanna use the old H.264 encoding that you know is more common and most computers can handle, you can't do 10-bit 422. So you lose your dynamic range and a lot of your color depth. That doesn't sound very fun to me. And at first I thought, you know, maybe because of the high bit rates, it has to be in the 265 format. But then the A7 III, A7S 3 was announced and that has H.264 10-bit 422. Boom. All right, that was a ramble. Last problem is gonna be the overheating. You don't get that much time in 8K, fine. I never really cared about that. That was just kind of like a bonus feature that they, in my opinion, threw in and that I figured would be a problem with overheating in any camera, especially at that size. Cool, don't care. 4K 120 overheats. Eh, like yes, I would love to shoot in 4K 120, um, but my problem with Canon, and it seems like they've stuck this way, is that at 120, you don't get to record sound. So, you know, most people, that's probably fine. They're recording little B-roll, little short clips of slow motion stuff, stuff they want to slow down. Me, I take performance videos um, of songs, and if I record the whole thing in slow motion, I can match up the sound in post, and then at any point in the song, I can take a clip and just slow it down. Slow it down, I just dissed you. 4K 60 also apparently overheats. 4K 24, 30, whatever. I've seen mixed results with the HQ mode, meaning it downsamples the 8K to 4K, but most people are saying that that overheats as well. So then you're kind of stuck with just regular 4K 24. I don't know if you can do a non down sampled 4K 60 or 120. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm pretty sure you can't do 120, but maybe 60. That actually be usable. And apparently those don't overheat as well. So my number one thing and why it's the number one problem is usability. If you can't use a camera or trust a camera, it's really a headache and it deters, deters, deters me immensely. So I have had a camera overheat on a shoot and I literally lost footage. And I didn't really notice because, you know, you take a shot, you move to a different scene, you set other stuff up, and it's not really something I'm checking on scene because I'm always moving. I, can, I don't really have time on set too, so to play back my video. So I really need to trust my camera to record the footage. I've never really been a huge critic of the EOS R for not having dual camera slot, slots, but the R5 has it, so that's, that's a good thing. We'll talk about good things in a second. So as long as I've had the EOS R, it has never overheated, and it's been quite a workhorse. I really love working with it. Working around the crop has been a little interesting, but I've been able to do it. Uh, it hasn't been the smoothest, but it's it's doable, and it's not necessarily something I criticize the camera. Essentially, I'm gonna have to use just regular 4K. So essentially, what does that make the R5? A slightly better R for me. Um, and for me, that's not necessarily worth almost four thousand dollars but if they can fix these issues have some sort of workaround uh, the camera's tempting i already have the rf 15 to 35 lens so i'd love to be able to stay within the ecosystem and just get a new body so i don't really know how much they can fix with firmware so i guess they could add you know 264 formats that record 10-bit 42 that would be a huge win for me 
they could probably unlock the recording limit. That would probably be easy for them. So with the overheating, it's kind of a little bit of a debate. Um, I know the camera isn't too hot to the touch when it does overheat from videos that I've seen and articles, but the camera is still stopping. So I'm pretty sure this is something Sony does is you can turn off or set it to have a higher temperature limit. So really before the camera actually does have to shut off and maybe that will give you an extra 20 minutes, 30 minutes of record time before overheating and the camera's actually hot. The other thing that could work is if they change the codecs to be a little bit more efficient. Maybe that will put less strain on the processors and therefore cool the whole unit down. So I think I've bashed this camera enough and I have had high expectations for this camera and why I think I'm going a little hard on it. Besides that, it's gonna produce amazing images. I love what comes out of my R over what came out of my previous Sony and previous cameras that I've had. And I'm sure other camera companies are catching up in color science and you know the ease of use and how just enjoyable it is to use this camera. So I'm sure the five is gonna be better. So who do I personally think should get this camera? A photographer, really. Someone who just mainly shoots pictures, loves Canon, I guess, or you know, is getting into the RF line because the lenses are even better than the EF lenses. They're sharper, um, the glass is higher quality, and the contacts, the metal pins, can transfer a lot more data and a lot more usage so they can put IS in these high quality L lenses. If you are mainly a video person like me, this camera, I just can't see it being relevant. I think the record limit is really gonna put down for a lot of people, maybe not me, but a lot of people are gonna be deterred from this camera. And then you add in the overheating issues and the codecs that most people just don't have these high power computers for. So hopefully Canon can push out some sort of update and really change their narrative around because things are getting pretty hot for them. I guess the last question is, am I getting this camera? I'll wait about a month to see how things go and I'll make my decision. Because ER, ERS, <laughs> EOS R, I knew was a stopgap. It's something to hold me over until the next big camera comes out. And it looks like that's in 2020. I've got my mind to make. I've got to make up my mind in the next month or so and uh, really figure out where this journey is going to take me. Because I will tell you this, this will be the last time I switch ecosystems because it's not cheap and I feel like I wasted a lot of money. All right, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of the Canon EOS R5 and R6 and also about the other cameras. I should be putting out my thoughts on the A7S III pretty shortly and uh, we'll see what happens. Y'all take it easy.